Wait a second. And I think we are live. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi, Node.js developers. And welcome back to our first day of a Node.js hackathon. So today I prepared a workshop for you. Uh, so let me share my slides that I have prepared uh, over here. Now you should be able to see them. And yeah, as I said, welcome back. This is the first day of a Node.js hack event. Uh, the event that we are uh, encouraging everyone to join and participate, build that application that you always wanted to build. And um, yeah, uh, with the help of our workshops, we're going to try to help you as much as possible. Alexandra, you can come over. Um, so welcome back everyone who has been here during yesterday, the announcement. Uh, I see a lot of people in the chat. Hello, guys. Let me know where are you joining us from. And also today, I want to know at what stage you are already. Have you started already? Do you have an idea for the application that you're going to build? And um, yeah, let me know. I'm interested in that. Uh, all right. So uh, today, as I said, I have prepared a workshop for you. And the first uh, the, today's workshop is going to be on the topic uh, of building any mobile applications with React Native, I'm going to show you the way and the resources needed in order to, uh, to be able to build any applications with React Native. And by the end of this uh, video, we're also going to build a virtual events application because um, uh, the best way to teach and to learn is by actually building something. And I decided that during these workshops, that's going to be the, uh, the case as well, because it's quite important to yeah, like have like this practical experience, knowing exactly how to get started with a project, how to initialize it, how to change something. So I think you'll, you'll get a lot of value out of this. So um, regarding the application, yeah, as I said, we're going to build a virtual events. I'm going to try to be a little bit faster, not faster, but I'm going to move a bit faster in order to allow uh, and give you like the time that you need in order to build your application. Because I know you must be busy these days uh, coding the application, so I don't want to steal a lot of your time. Uh, but um, yeah, in the end, we're going to have uh, this application. The application that we're going to start today, we're going to build throughout the next two days uh, in the next two workshops. And tomorrow we're going to implement the backend with Nhost. And on Sunday, we're going to implement the chatting functionalities in our virtual events app using StreamChat SDK. So stay tuned for this. Um, even if you are not participating at the hackathon, I think you'll get a lot of value out of this series. Um, and you will you'll learn some practical experience of building applications with React Native. Um, so uh, let's uh, see. Uh, yeah, back to the Node.js Just Hackathon. Uh, if you are joining here and you haven't seen uh, all the announcements that we are doing before, let me quickly summarize what's the Node.js Just Hack about. This is a three days hackathon organized for mobile developers. It's starting today. So if you're watching this live, you still have time to participate and win prizes. So yeah, if you're watching it, get started. Uh, check out yesterday uh, live stream where we announced and gave more details about the, uh, the event. We're going to have a demo day on Monday, 28th. So um, then we're going to see all the uh, projects that you have built during this uh, long weekend. For that, we have prepared for you three practical workshops. This is the first workshop that I'm talking about, and also three group sessions. And the first group sessions, we're going to have it uh, today after the live stream ends. So uh, if you're interested, make sure to join the Zoom events in order to be able to, um, uh, to join our group coaching sessions. Um, so as I said, the Zoom, the Zoom events, you can join following this URL notjust.dev slash hack dash event. And there you'll see the um, uh, timeline of all the workshops and also ability to join uh, Zoom. However, we are streaming everything on YouTube. So uh, if we are running out of spaces on Zoom, then uh, don't worry, you're still going to be able to watch all of this on YouTube. We are streaming them and also they will be available publicly on the channel. So if you miss it, you're going to be able to rewatch it later. Um, 
So back to uh, the topic for today, building any mobile applications with React Native. Uh, so why did I choose this topic? Um, I want to show you that um, it's possible to actually build 99.9% .9 of applications with React Native. Um, during the last two years, I have built over 25, probably even more, but 25 public projects on YouTube. Um, and these projects range in different use cases. They are all different in features, functionalities, and all of them are built using React Native. So if you're interested in easily building cross-platform uh, mobile applications, React Native uh, nowadays is a very good option because it allows you to write once and, and then be able to run the application both on Android, on iOS, and also on the web. So uh, this provides a lot of benefits uh, for developers because you don't have to support two separate applications, like one for Android, one for iOS, and maybe potentially the third one for web. You can do that with React Native, and React Native behind, um, behind the scenes will take your code and will uh, provide you the native application. So the applications built with React Native, these are not some kind of web views, um, some kind of web views that are built like um, in the past. I don't know, you'd build a, build a website and you'd put a web view in the application and you'd call that a mobile application. No, the React Native applications are, are truly native, which means that we can interact with the native features of the platforms, such as camera, notifications, and so on. So, yeah. Um, now I want to I want to show you how you can get started if you are new here. If you have followed this channel for some time, most probably you already uh, saw most of our builds that we have. You have already your environment set up. But for people that are new here, um, I would suggest, uh, first of all, to start with setting up your uh, environment. For that, we have very good videos on the channel. We have four videos for environment setup. And these four videos are uh, setting up Expo on Windows, setting up Expo on Mac OS, and the same for React Native CLI. So uh, check them out if you don't have already the environment ready. Uh, and I highly recommend you, if you're getting started or if you're building applications for the hackathon, I highly encourage you to use Expo because the environment setup is much, much easier. You don't have to install a lot of things. and Time is the thing that you don't have a lot during a hackathon. So get started with Expo. Uh, Expo provides a very good developer experience. And nowadays I recommend everyone that are writing React Native applications to write with Expo because um, in the past, maybe there were some limitations for Expo, but nowadays anything is possible with Expo. So you don't have any limitations, but on the other side, you get all the benefits that Expo tooling is providing for your uh, application. Um, so uh, we also have like a, a, a playlist, React Native for Beginners, and there uh, we covered a lot of tutorials, a lot of simple builds uh, that are targeted for beginners. And uh, a lot of people are getting started, are getting into React Native with these videos. And they are saying that even if they didn't have experience, they managed to follow along um, because we always try to take it step by step and make sure that uh, everyone can, can follow the code and understand what we are building. Um, if uh, Here we have a couple of beginner-friendly builds. Uh, very specific ones. The first one is the Tesla clone. Uh, you can find it with the title, Build Your First Application in React Native. Uh, that is at one hour and 51 minutes, but in that application, in that project, you build an actual application. You use a, a couple of important components from React Native, and I think it's a very good start uh, for, uh, for beginners. Uh, also, the Discord, the Discord clone is a quite beginner-friendly build. So uh, you can check out that as well. Why I'm providing all of this, it's not necessarily for promotion. Yeah, I like to promote my uh, the, the work that our team is doing, but this I'm telling you this in order to give you ideas uh, where to look for solutions or where to look 
at the, some kind of a getting started guide for the application that you're going to build during the hackathon. So if you are thinking about building something with cars, I don't know, like a Tesla clone or something like that, here you have it. Then we have a bunch of social media applications and here are a couple of them. So if you're planning to build something quite similar in functionalities to Instagram where people can share photos, but you decided to solve a very specific problem of, I don't know, very specific niche of people, veterinarians sharing photos of, I don't know, dogs. Uh, in that case, you can look at the Instagram clone adjusted to your own needs and then uh, participate at the uh, hackathon. The same thing with Twitter, with TikTok, we have um, other social medias as well. Pinterest, we have a very good one um, that, that you can see how we can build different uh, kind of grids and views to display information on the screen. Uh, when it comes to chat applications, these are quite popular. We have a lot of them. Uh, we have um, chats that we have built ourselves, but that took us a lot of time. So as you can see, the Signal clone here, it says six videos, but I think it was a seven videos series, which means that seven uh, times four, that's how much, 28 hours uh, of, of uh, building in order to build the Signal clone. But uh, if you're interested in building chat applications or to add chat, thing, uh, chat features to your application, then on Sunday, I'm going to show you a much easier way uh, to do that using StreamChat SDK. And we actually use that in the Discord clone. So if you see the Discord clone is one video, it's three and a half hours, and it's a much more complete uh, chat messaging application compared to um, um, a project that we build from scratch. So in cases where you're building like a startup or a project for a hackathon, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can easily use services. You can use things that are already built and this way save time and focus on the uh, main, um, on the core uh, of your application. Okay, so here we also have an audio and video calling application. If anyone would be interested in doing uh, a video calling application, most probably that's going to be too much for just three days, but you can check out this playlist as well. Uh, other interesting projects, uh, we have a crypto price tracker. Um, again, there might be some interesting ideas around crypto projects. Maybe you get the data, but... Um, the way you will differentiate your application or, or the way you will provide value is by representing this data in a different way or um, allowing users to sign up for news or to very specific uh, coins that they are interested in. So you can take this build, uh, check it out on YouTube, try to build it yourself and then uh, continue with adding additional features that you want to add there. So um, yeah, these are I these are the categories that I see people uh, trying to build, and uh, here are some starting points to to help you on that way. Um, yeah, uh, check them out. It is allowed to uh, to to start a project using some of these. Uh, builds, but you have to code it yourself. And also you have to provide extra value on top of that. Don't just <laughs> get the GitHub repository of these projects and submit it. We're going to see that and um, um, it's not going to be fair compared to others who are working. So start it from there, but show us exactly what is your contribution to that project. How did you modify in an interesting way? And if you do that, uh, you also will have a chance to win some prizes from not just Academy, because uh, we are going to offer a special prize for a project that was started from some of our tutorials. So if you're starting it from projects, you also have a chance to win some special prizes. All right. So um, yeah, back to the virtual events. Uh, let's focus our energy now. Now, uh, if you are ready on the virtual events, on the application that I have prepared for today, um, that yeah, that we are going to build today, tomorrow, and on Sunday. 
It's going to be a virtual uh, events application. And as I always say, uh, it's important to start with a problem. Like why does such an application needs to, to exist? And if you're building it with a purpose of, um, of maybe potentially continuing it and uh, turning it into a startup and continue working on it, uh, then this is how we should approach it. So the problem that I encounter while organizing this not just hackathon event is how to better display and show um, um, information about the event, like what sessions do we have? What workshops do we have? Group coaching. And when you're doing uh, multi-days virtual events, this is getting very uh, hard to display in a clear way to the end users so that everyone has a has uh, knows what and when to expect or how to access the sessions, what they are going to be about. So having this problem, uh, I thought about the solution and the solution would be an application that will allow you to uh, manage and host virtual events. So what I have in mind and what I think is ability to see different sessions of that event, similar to how we have uh, for our Not Just Hackathon different sessions. Uh, I want to display all of them there with more information. And what's the additional benefit that I want to add to this application is allowing people to chat between each other. So if you're going to a virtual event, the problem, the most, the, the problem is usually uh, harder to network with people. Because if you are in an offline event, of course, you're going to approach people, you're going to meet them, um, you're going to team up and so on. But when it's virtual, people uh, don't communicate that easily. Uh, so um, from I think this, this is the problem of the event organizers. Uh, and with an application like this, people will be able to chat with other attendees. Also, we will... Uh, create separate chat rooms for different sessions so the communication can be um, grouped by, by the topic, by the session, and so on. Pre please increase the volume. Um, hmm. What's happening there? Let's see audio settings. Hello, hello. Hello. I don't know what's happening. So... Input volume. Is it better now? One, two, three, one, two, three. I don't know. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yes. Okay, let's continue then. Alex is saying that everything is okay. So yeah, um, we, what I was talking about, where I was. So yeah, I was talking about the event application. So uh, this is our workshop and the first workshops for this event is sponsored by who? By of course us, the Not Just Academy. So if you're not um, um, familiar with the Not Just Academy, this is our premium courses that we offer for uh, full stack mobile developers. And while we have a lot of free content on YouTube, and if you're a beginner, we recommend you start there. And if you uh, kind of go through a couple of builds and already feel more comf comfortable uh, working with React Native, then we recommend you uh, to upgrade to our, the premium courses that we have if you uh, intend and even if you're serious about becoming a full stack mobile developer. So uh, the course goes much more in depth. We are covering there all the aspects of building applications from the drawing board, from uh, actually architecting them, uh, designing them, and then putting them in practice with React Native on the front end, with AWS Amplify on the back end, and we implement a lot of uh, features and functions that a production ready application would need, such as in-app notification, uh, a feed, a news feed system that um, application like Facebook have, and much more. And also, if you are interested, we have a 25% discount sale during this Black Friday uh, season, which is available until Monday, until the end of the event. 
And yeah, if you're interested to upgrade your skills and become a full stack mobile developer, check that out. Check that uh, out in the description below at academy.notjust.dev. And with that being said, um, yeah, Black Friday, Black Friday, let's go. I know that I'm not doing sales for this course often, actually. I did a sale only when uh, we did the pre-registration uh, when the course was not ready. But after that, we have run a couple of batches already with people um, and we got our, like feedback. We are keeping improving the course and uh, that's why like we are trying to, uh, to not usually run um, sales like this, but when we do, I think you will enjoy it. So um, I think we can get started with the actual build. I hope everyone is comfortable. Um, let's uh, go through the chat real quick. Uh, no, before we are going through the chat, let me show you the um, prerequisites that you need if you intend to follow along. If you intend to build it together with me for learning purposes or if you want to continue this build and have some ideas because Actually, I didn't talk about that. You, this idea that we're going to do now with virtual events, this application can be adjusted to so many needs and so many problems out there. Um, for example, uh, anything that has to do with scheduling with some kind of events at some uh, uh, intervals. And here we can think about um, like scheduling applications for um, service provider, for a hairdresser, for a nail uh, specialist, uh, anything that has like um, for a barbershop, things like that. You can adjust this application and use it in that context as well and allow people to select slots, uh, confirm them, communicate with their provider, with their, with, uh, with other person. So I think uh, there is a lot of potential in uh, this type of application. And I want to see if you're interested where you can take this idea and for what problem you would like to apply it for. Uh, with that being said, if you want to follow along, uh, I have prepared a guide, a step-by-step -step guide that you can get by following this URL. Um, it's also in the description of a video or you can find simply on our blog, on our notjust.dev slash blog. So I'm going to open it here because we're going to need it throughout this video. And I think we are done with the uh, presentation here, right? Let's see. Yeah. I'm not very comfortable today because I have like this monitor, like my setup is a bit different today and you'll see how I always look there. That's where my monitor is and yeah, not very comfortable, but that's uh, what we have to, uh, to work with. All right, so uh, having this uh, guide, uh, make sure to download the asset bundle because I include there a couple of custom-made components and dummy data that we will need throughout the tutorial. So just simply leave your email address and you will receive uh, the, the zip, uh, the compressed files that we will need today. And now uh, we can take a very short break to look through the comments to see what people are saying, if there is any questions. And then I think we can get started. So uh, let's see, let's see. At the end, we're gonna do a proper Q&A session and also we're gonna have the group sessions uh, later today. And we can uh, go into the more complicated questions or more in depth. Uh, is Expo mandatory to build this application? Um, the way I will build it and the way I will show you how to build it, yes, Expo is mandatory because we are using Expo to build it. Does it mean that you cannot build it with React Native? No, that doesn't mean that. If you know what you're doing and you know the libraries that you're working with, then you can adjust this build for React Native CLI as well. But there is no uh, reason not to go with Expo. Um, for this application, like zero, basically zero reasons not to do it. I don't know why people are so afraid of uh, Expo. There is a very big misconceptions out there. I think we should do some videos about that. Uh, and yes, you can use React Native CLI answering your question. Uh, right.
So guys, uh, let's see. Did you answer my question if you started working or not? Jar, Vadim, you're the greatest. Thank you very much. Can you tell me Zoom meeting ID? Uh, the Zoom meeting ID. This is uh, this is a Zoom event, so um, you're gonna have to join the Zoom events through this URL uh, here. And I'm sorry if uh, you are not able to join Zoom. Uh, uh, if you're from India, then it, you're not gonna be able to join, join the Zoom just because of some weird technical issues with Zoom events running in India. And now I cannot change it. India is in block countries. I wrote, uh, I wrote them yesterday a support ticket. And they said like, after you start the event, you cannot change this setting. And I'm like, what? So I'm very sorry for everyone from India uh, if you're not able to join the Zoom, but you will be able to uh, watch it live on YouTube. So next time, we're going to make sure that uh, Zoom doesn't restrict us in this, this way. Okay, guys, so uh, I think we can get started slowly because we, as I said, I don't want to waste a lot of your time today. Uh, so let me do it like this. Let me get ready. All right, it's gonna be very comfortable. You're here and our, okay, sharing the screen. Give me just one second to set everything up here. <clears throat> so after you downloaded this, let's scroll down in the guide that we have prepared for you today. Until we get to that, let's initialize the application using Expo. And that's gonna be our first step uh, to, to get started. So for that, uh, I'm going to open a terminal. I'm going to Let's let me zoom in so that you can. Why? Why? Okay. So, so from the terminal, let me navigate to a directory of my choice. So I usually store them somewhere there. <laughs> Come on. Projects, YouTube, not just hack. Let's do it here. And when you are in the directory that you want to initialize the project in, that then using the simple command npx create expo app, then providing the name, so virtual, virtual events, this is gonna be the name of our application. And don't press enter yet because we need to select a tab, a, um, a template uh, from which to start the project. So using the dash dash template option, we can provide the tabs template. Uh, there are a couple of uh, predefined templates uh, with Expo, uh, but these tabs will come pre-installed with a navigation library and a couple of other libraries that is gonna just save us a lot of time um, in order not to have to install it ourselves. And during, during a hackathon when time is important, I think it's, um, it's good to start with a template that already has something, not just bare minimum. So yeah, let's wait until everything is installed there. Is this recording available? This uh, workshop is gonna be available as a recording after, um, yeah, after we finish it. So, yeah. By the way, guys, if you are getting some value out of this channel, please, please consider subscribing to the channel down below uh, and help us reach more developers and help them become full stack mobile developers. That's our goal. And 
um, yeah, we are doing our best in that direction. Everyone who is just joining us live on YouTube um, while the application is still uh, initializing, let me quickly summarize what we are doing here. So today we are in the first day of a Not Just Hack event. And uh, for this event, I'm um, calling all developers to build their dream application, submit a demo and participate in, uh, to, in the hackathon uh, contest and win potentially prizes. And in order to help you uh, do that, I have prepared three workshops during this hackathon. This is the first one. And today I'm going to show you how you can easily build a virtual events application with React Native. So um, yes, we have our application already um, initialized. Let me share my screen. Here we have it. And uh, now it's time to open our application in uh, the editor of choice. In my case, that's Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to do a code and then the name of the um, application, which is virtual events. And this will open my application in Visual Studio Code like this. I'm going to try to put it this way. All right. Uh, I don't need that terminal anymore. Uh, give me one second. I know that this will be much better if I hide the doc. Okay, this should be should look better. Um, so this is the um, our project that was generated by Expo. Before we get into the files and folders structure, let's go ahead and see how we can run this application. To do that, let's open a terminal. You can open it from the top um, menu item new terminal and then new terminal. And from here, let's go ahead and run npm start. npm start will uh, start our Expo development server. And from here, we have a couple of options on how to run this application on a device. Um, why I'm telling that Expo is a very good option for beginner, for specifically for beginners that are just getting started is that you do not have to have any simulators, emulators installed and set up on your machine. Because that part is kind of tricky to, 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 initiate, to set up on your machine time consuming and maybe you are you don't want to invest that time before trying it out so with expo you don't have to do that you can simply download the expo go application from uh, the market scan this QR code with the expo go application and boom you have the application running on your phone in my case i want to run it on a simulator uh, so i'm going to run it on ios uh, this application will work the same on Android and iOS. We're going to try it. Uh, but yeah, if you are working on a Windows machine um, and you want to test it with simulators, uh, then you only will be able to do it with Android. For iOS, you either need to yeah, scan this QR code or use a macOS device. So I'm going to put the application right here. This should be good. And um, yeah, waiting for Expo to load. This is not yet ready. Now, um, it will load. Um, yeah, it will load the first file. So let's wait until it reaches 100. And then we should be greeted with tab one. So this is the default application that we initialize with Expo. Voila, we have it running on a device. Uh, this application consists of two tabs, uh, tab one and tab two. I'm going to just show you to have an idea what visually do we have. Uh, in tab one, if you see in the header here, we have a button. If we press on this button, it will open a model. So we're going to use most of these screens for our needs. 
simply modifying what's inside, what's rendering inside those screens. All right, so um, let's uh, let's quickly have a look at uh, the project structure. I'm gonna show you where you should find what. Um, oh, okay, let's do it like this. So starting from uh, from the top, let's do it like this. Starting from the top, um, no, let's start with the most important file. The most important file and the entry point in your, in your application is the app.tsx. This is where everything starts. And as we can see, uh, we, we have here our app component, which is a simple function that returns some JSX. This is the JSX syntax, looks very similar to HTML and allows us to render uh, components uh, in React. We see here that we are rendering the navigation. The navigation is a custom component that is coming from the navigation uh, folder. This is where we're going here. And in the navigation, we have index. I don't want to stop at this file too much now because um, it can scare a lot of people, but we are gonna get back here and we're, I'm gonna show you like how we can work with navigation, how we can define screens and so on. So uh, the other important folder that we will work with is the screens folder. And this contains uh, the code for all the screens that we will have in the application. So for example, we have here a tab one screen, a tab two screen, a model screen, and also a not, not found screen. Um, for the reusable components that we will create that will be, um, that we could reuse in multiple places in our application, such as a post component or a button component or an input component, those components will live in the components folder. Here, we have a couple of them uh, that we will not need uh, during this build. This is just coming with a template that we chose. All right, so um, now that we have an understanding of the basic structure, let me go ahead and uh, actually I'm going to add everything so we can have like git commits for people to, to look back if they want. So init expo up, this is gonna be our first, um, first point, first save point. Uh, cool, so. Uh, the next step, the next step is to import our asset bundle and the assets that we're gonna need. So uh, from the uh, guide that you're following, where is it? Yeah, from this guide, uh, after you um, filled in this form, you should receive an asset bundle. We will need this asset bundle because I prepared there a couple of uh, files for you that will uh, simplify the, the build for today. So let me quickly open it. Come on, where are you? Uh, asset bundle, yeah, here it is. So this is what you should receive uh, in the asset bundle. What I'm gonna do is let me uh, open the assets from our uh, Visual Studio code here. And let's drag, first of all, the data under our assets folder. Make sure that the data folder now is a sibling of the fonts and images in order to import it properly. Here I prepared for you a couple of, uh, some information about the, um, uh, the events, the users that we're gonna um, work with. You're not gonna have to write some dummy data and your application will look good. Um, next, um, let's actually do it now um, as we are talking about this. So let's go ahead and uh, open our components folder. And in the components folder uh, from the asset bundle, I have a custom button. Drag the custom button here and again, this is a simple button with some styles. It's not a simple, it's a bit confusing. You don't have to look into it, but it simply renders a button. And depending of on the type of a button, it will have a different style. Field or just the outline or just as a link. Um, yeah, we're gonna use that as well. And lastly, the last step is to import the off screens 
inside our screens. I'm gonna talk more about Valve screens later in the video when we get there. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how you can build yourself with authentication screens, but we're not gonna have the time to work on the authentication screens. And because authentication is not the most important part of our application, uh, it's okay to take uh, a shortcut here and use something that we already have built um, on YouTube Live. So now that we have all of this uh, imported, uh, we are actually ready to get started. Uh, I'm gonna do one more git add, git commit, import asset bundle. Are you following guys? Is everything okay? Let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm curious how many people will actually follow along and build this application uh, as well. Just to know how to approach it better. Will you have this uh, build on GitHub? Um, probably yes, but yeah, maybe. Okay, all right, so. What's going to be our first step? As I said, our virtual events is going to work a lot with um, calendars and displaying things uh, in a clear way for people to see like what events we're going to organize. So because of that, at the core of our application are calendars. So if you scroll down here until we reach calendar, then we can see that uh, the next step that we're going to have to do. Uh, let's first of all open the documentation of React Native Calendar Library. We're going to use this library because it offers like very nice and easy to use components when you have to work with calendars, with agendas, and so on. So as you can see here, you can display like a simple calendar. You can display calendar with different markers, or you can also um, use an expandable calendar that will show details on each day. And this is exactly what we are looking for. So if we look in the documentation, let me zoom in a bit and also probably in the in here, I need to zoom in a bit as well. I forgot to do that. Yeah, probably too much. Let me know if this way uh, it's visible properly. Uh, yeah, let's let's see. So um what we will need out of this library is the agenda, not the agenda, at least, but the agenda. So this agenda look like out of the box, it will display all of this. And yeah, let's, let's get started. Let's install the library and set it up in our application and see how we can use it to render information about our events. So for that, uh, if you go here, uh, I prepared the command for you, the npx expo install React Native Calendars. So let's grab this command in our Visual Studio Code. Let's open the terminal. And from the terminal, I'm going to um, install React Native Calendars. Actually, I think I'll be able to do it this way as well, a bit larger. Uh, all right, so here we have our application. And uh, our application, yeah, like React Native calendars have been installed successfully. Uh, let's go and see where we're going to have to do the changes for this. I want to add all the information about the, um, the event in the tab one. Um, so let's go ahead in the screens. And here we see tab one screen. All right. This is going to be the... Um, the, the screen that we will work with. Because if I update here to hello world, uh, not like that, we see the title right away changing there. So let's first of all, um, delete the text, the view, and also the edit info here, just to have a simple container, just like that. Um, yeah. Uh, also, let's remove the edit info screen from here, this one from here, and have a very um, simple and empty component. Uh, from the styles, I'm going to remove the title and separator. 
And in the container, I also will remove uh, align items and justify content just to have a simple container that will expand to fulfill the whole screen with Flex One. Now uh, we can go back in the documentations of our agenda and see how we can use this component. So their documentation is probably not the best because we do not show like, oh, actually here we have code examples. Uh, okay, that's 401, 404. Um, and yeah, like the only way to, to work with it is to look through all of this. I already, uh, I already, manage to figure out all the properties and parameters that we need for this uh, component for the agenda. And we have uh, the code here, but I think that instead of just copying, pasting it from here, we're going to build towards that code. And I'm going to show you all the steps that we need to take in order to display this. So the first step is, of course, we're going to start uh, by importing, importing agenda from React Native Calendars. This is our first step. An agenda will is a component that we can render here in our, inside our container. Let's close it right away like this. Now, probably nothing will happen or even we will receive an error. No, actually it's displayed. Really? That easy? No, no, uh, yes. Oh my God, okay. So just by displaying the agenda, we already see something on the screen, which is really, really nice. Uh, but before this is actually usable, we still have to send some information to this agenda. Um, one of these information is the two properties that are um, inherited from the flat list. Uh, the agenda behind the scene, scenes is using a flat list to render, um, let me show you what exactly it's rendering, uh, to render information here in this list with um, actual events. So this is an actual flat list. So for that reason, the agenda expects two properties that are coming from a flat list. One of them is the items, uh, items, but here, instead of providing like an array of items, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to provide the dummy data that we imported. So if we, if we look in our assets folder data, and here, if we're looking at events to see a list of events, we have information about all the events for the not just hack. Let's go ahead and back in our tab one screen, and let's import the data about the events like this, assets, events, dot JSON. Oh, I need also data. So assets, data, events, dot JSON. Perfect. Now I can send these events as items to the agenda. And if you look at the events, you will see how, um, what is the structure of the data that agenda expects. Uh, and it's not similar to a flat list where a flat list expects an array of items. Here is actually an object with where the keys are the dates in a month. For example, 24, 25, 26, 27. And the values are the, all the events that are happening on this day. So in, in the first day, we had only one event. In the second day, you see we had two events. So just keep in mind, like, uh, what structure do we are we working with? <clears throat> uh, the next step is, of course, a way how to render them. Because as you can see, we already see something there. Um, if I refresh the application, we already see Friday 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th. It already knows what dates do we have uh, information for and it shows. But the problem is that it doesn't show the actual events. For that, we have to provide a render function that will render one event in our list. So let's go ahead and uh, define the render, uh, render item. Uh, 
uh, render item. And here, what we're gonna uh, receive is we're gonna receive one of these items from here, for example, this workshop, which has ID, name, height, day, and so on. So uh, let's call this, I don't know, reservation. Actually, it's a very bad name, but in the dummy code, that's how I called it, just because I took it from the very example. And this reservation is gonna be of a type agenda entry. And the agenda entry is imported from React Native Calendars and is a type that specifies that every entry has a name, a height, and a day. Um, and what can we do here? Well, we can simply return um, a text with reservation dot name. Let's start simple and see that on the screen. Uh, we're gonna import text from React Native from here. Or um, yeah, let's import it from there. And now let's go ahead and send this render function to our agenda through props. So render uh, render item equal render item. And if I do, if I save, I right away see the titles of my workshops. Workshop, 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 demo day. Awesome. Uh, let's work a little bit more on the render item or actually let's not spend a lot of time here with a render item. Let's look in the guide. I just want to show you how you can put it together, um, but making it beautiful is not something that we have time for now. So in the guide and under the calendar, if we scroll down there, we will find the render item function. So let's copy it from here back in Visual Studio. Uh, let's replace our render item from here with the one from the guide. What it does, it uh, adds a pressable that, um, um, that allows us to react to press events by the user. And actually we need to import it from React Native like this, pressable. Um, we need to import alert from React Native. And we need to define some styles for our item itself. So under the styles, let's define some styles for the item. What do we have there? All right, we have a couple of uh, styles there. The, in the, um, here, so the item styles are this one. We set a background color. Uh, we set a background color. We set some border radius to make them uh, round on the corners. We set some padding margins uh, to give them some space and that's how we do it. Uh, what's happening with a Q&A session there? Do you know? Uh, Q&A session, what's happening with you there? We have here font size is first. Oh, is first, is first. Yeah, and let me refresh. Yes, now it works. Uh, it was not loading the styles properly. But now, as you can see, um, these render items will render one of these uh, events that is happening. Uh, when we press on it, we are simply using alert to show it on the screen by uh, showing the name. So that's why when we press, we see workshop. If I press on the Q&A session, I see Q&A session. And doing some um, magic with some if statement here, we are highlighting the first event of the day. So as you can see, the Q&A session is grayed out because it's the second event. And if we're gonna have even more of them there, they're all gonna be displayed with a grayed out um, and only the first one is uh, has a font size, a bigger font size and the color black. So this way, now if I'm gonna move throughout these events like this, it automatically scrolls uh, into the view. Uh, for the days that we didn't specify any events, it thinks that it's still loading, but we're gonna fix that later. So yeah, this is how we can do it. 
as simple as that, we have a pretty functional agenda here. Uh, however, that's not everything because we can um, also have a situation when a date doesn't have any days. So you can also, thank you. Uh, for example, if I say that, um, the day before had no events, which means it's an empty array. And if I put 23 here, if I go to the 23, I basically see an empty day there. What you can do is you can provide to our agenda, we can provide a function called render, render empty date render empty date. And yeah, let's go ahead and grab this uh, rend render empty date function from the guide, render empty date. You will see it here. And it simply displays a view with a text. This is an empty date. You, we can put it here. After the render item finishes, we can put it render empty date and also we will grab the styles for the empty date component. Empty date needs height, flex, and some padding. Let's scroll down here, save. And if we look at the empty day now, and if I ref refresh, then if I go to the 23rd, doesn't show anything. Uh, why? Oh, because we didn't send it to our agenda. Render empty date equal render empty date. Now, will you work? Uh, let's see if it, oh, 23. This is empty date. Yes, it's working. Yeah, it doesn't have like the same styles, like you can work on that. But here, I just want to show you how you can uh, handle the situation when, when on a date there is no events. How is it going, guys? Are you following? Am I going too fast or is the pace uh, okay? Because at the same time, I don't want to rush it too much, but at the same time, I want to, I know that uh, you want to spend this time building the application that you're going to participate with during the hackathon. So let me know how to, to better approach it. Let's see the Zoom chat. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi, everyone who are uh, joining us on Zoom. Yes, the technical guide someone was asking is in the blog. Uh, I will paste it one more time. Thank you, Rogelio. Okay, so render empty date we have. Uh, what else do we need? What else? What else? Uh, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, items. What we can also provide here to the agenda, there is a lot of parameters, there are a lot of properties, and we can look into this uh, documentation and see like all of these items. For example, there is a function called load items for month. Um, and yeah, like load items for month. This function will be called every time we basically uh, change the month. Because if we scroll and we try to look at some events for, for from the future, then we will probably have to send a different backend request to get this data. And there is an option to do that using, um, where is it, the uh, load items for month property. Uh, I'm not going to do that because for us, it's going to be simple, Simple, like all of the events, we're going to load them right away because we know uh, it's in the short amount of time, it's in the same month, and we're not going to have to work with these month changes. Um, another property that you can say is the selected, and this, uh, by 
uh, sending here a date, you can um, uh, define like what date is gonna be selected by default. So if I do 25, 25 is gonna be selected by default. If I do 24, this is gonna be the date selected by default. Uh, 24 and we see 25 with um, blue because this is the current date. So this is a good way to select the start, the beginning uh, date of the event. Uh, if we are looking, um, if the event haven't started yet. So if we are, for example, one week ahead, we're not gonna see any like information about the event, but, and that's why it's better to pre-select the, <laughs> the start date of the event. All right. Um, what else, what else? Yeah, I think these are the most important one. And also you can, uh, as you can see here in this list, it doesn't show only the events from 24th. It also shows from 25th, 26th and so on. You can adjust uh, this by specifying show, show only selected day items. And this will actually show only the events that are happening on that date. So for some, um, for some, um, service-based like uh, scheduling or a point appointment uh, applications. I think this property is something that you would be interested in. I'm gonna remove it because I want to show all of them here. Um, so, uh, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna stop here uh, and I'm gonna commit. No, I'm not gonna stop completely. I'm gonna stop with setting up this agenda because we can work a lot on this and we can adjust a lot of things, but we have to move uh, to the next stop. So let's do, let's add everything. And let's commit um, agenda from React Native Calendars. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to say that the way you are displaying the events here is totally customizable by you and you, uh, you can do it here, for example, in this pressable. At the moment, we simply render the name of the, the event, uh, but you can display um, images there if you have some more information. You should definitely um, render here the date of the event so that people know like at what time it is starting. Probably date is clear, but time uh, is important. Maybe you want to show like who is the host of that event. So the um, possibilities here are uh, limitless. You can do anything you... Uh, you think of uh, for here. Because at the end of the day, all the data is coming from this array of events and you will receive that here as an um, agenda entry. Okay, so um, we have now our main page of events. And as you can see, we are one hour into the live stream, probably half hour, 30 minutes only in the building phase. And we kind of have already an application that uh, a minimum, minimum viable product that in, in a, some way brings some value. So basically you can, uh, thinking about MVPs and thinking about like, does this application solve a problem? Well, yes, it displays if information about events or session for an event in a very clear way, in a more clear way, like there is still work to do, but it's already something. So I don't know, you can stop here and say like, this is my project. That's what I'm saying that it is possible to build um, a, a, an application in three days. Um, and um, yeah, we should continue, right? We should. Um, the next step is going to be providing a bit more details about the event by having a specific page for that event. So when I press on this event, I don't want to show like this alert that we are showing right now. This does, is, doesn't provide more value than we currently see on the first screen. What I want to do is I want to open, uh, to go to a new screen and see the details about this event. 
So um, yeah, event details page. For that, we are going to reuse one of the existing screens that we have in the application. And I'm talking about the model that is opening when we press here. So if I press here, we are opening a model. Let's go ahead and reuse this model to display information about one event. So when I will press on this event, I want to see the model being displayed. For that, uh, I'm gonna close everything and I'm gonna go to the screens model screen. This, if I will open it from here, this is a model screen that I'm talking about. Now, now let's go ahead and remove the text, the view and the edit screen info component. Um, let's leave the status bar because it makes the top part black, as you can see, like the, the status bar behind the clock and behind the battery. Like if I close it, this one becomes um, white background and black text. And when the model is up, the, it is reversed. So it's happening because of this status bar here in the model screen. I'm also gonna remove this edit screen component, the text that we don't need anymore. And yeah, here we have an empty component ready to, to start working on it. Um, we're gonna need some data here. At the moment, I'm gonna take the data from, um, from assets data event. This is one specific event. So let's go ahead and import event from assets data and then event. Even uh, here inside the container, let's go ahead and display a render a text. Actually, we're gonna need the text, so I'm gonna leave text here. And let's render. Let's start by rendering as a text the event dot name. Under the event dot name, I will want to display the event date. So let's do event dot date. Um, what else? Yeah, that's gonna be the main stuff. Now, if I open this model from here, okay, we have event name in the middle of the screen and the event time. Let's go ahead and um, clean up a bit the styles as well because we don't need, uh, actually the title, actually the title we need, right? Yes, the title we will need the separator we will not need. And also let's remove centering from our main container. I want things to start from the top top left corner. Now let's go ahead and uh, give to this text our styles.title to add this styles there. For the title, we probably want a bit more 24 uh, bold and also let's do some margin as well. Margin, vertical, 10 to have some spacing. Let's go ahead and add some padding to the container uh, as we want things, yeah, like to have a small padding around. Um, and also I'm gonna do that a bit later. Now, what else I want on this page Um, we can display the, the time a little bit better. Let's um, style it using style, styles dot uh, time. And you know what I want to do here? Let's go and for the time, I will also increase the font size to probably 20 like this and the way I render it is I will have to parse this date somehow to display it in a more human readable way. Uh, for that, I can easily use the date object from uh, JavaScript. So I can in initialize a new date using new date and then provide that string there. And then I can say to date string. And now it should show it with a more human readable uh, syntax.
Okay, um, so what else, what else, what else? Uh, here I also prepared for you um, an icon that I will display before the time. Uh, the item is coming from the end design with the name calendar. And if we look now, it's gonna be like a small calendar there before. And what I want to do is display it in the same line with the date. So that's why I'm gonna put it actually inside our text component for the time like this. And to give it some space um, there, we can render some, like a pipe here, so it will look something like this. I don't know if we need that. It's up to you. Probably we don't. Just spaces without pipe, like this. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, the next step that I want on this page is I want a button that will uh, allow the user to click if he wants to join, if he wants to um, RSPV to this event, if he wants to receive like updates or basically if he's interested and if he wants to join, then we want to give this possibility. For that, we're gonna use the custom button that I provided you at the beginning of this tutorial. So let's do custom button from components, custom button. And after our time here, we can render the custom button. The title or the text is going to be um, join the event. On press, it's gonna be on join. This on join is going to be a function that we will not implement today. Uh, I mean, we will write it today, but we will implement it probably tomorrow or yeah, probably tomorrow when we will do the backend integration. But now with this custom button, let's open the model and see it in action. All right, we already have this button here. I think it will look better if the button will be on the bottom of the screen. And to do that, what we can uh, do is we can wrap our button with another view Let's put the button inside a view. And for this view, let's give some styles, styles.footer. We want this to be our footer. So if I do footer here, I can say that uh, the footer should have margin top auto and that will move it all the way to the bottom. It will put a lot of margin on the top and will move the component, the footer component all the way to the bottom. Now, uh, because this actually is very close to the bottom part of a screen, I can go ahead in the container here, add padding uh, bottom 25, just to make sure that uh, the buttons doesn't touch them, doesn't go too, too low there. So with this, we have this model that uh, shows us the, the events. Lastly, what I want to display on this page, uh, and I think is quite interesting, is I want to display a list of avatars from people that uh, joined this event. Because I want to provide this social interactions and networking part to these applications, I think knowing who else is coming is quite important for, for you. So that's why I prioritize this feature more than like displaying an image or something like that. Oh, for that, what we're gonna do, um, inside our footer, uh, above our join event button, we're gonna have a view that will render our avatars. So here, I'm gonna add a comment, user avatars. So how we're gonna do that? Uh, we are going to do that. For that, we need some data. And I provided this data in the users.json. You can see them here. So let's import this users.data in our model, model screen. Import uh, users from assets data users. And now for every user uh, in that list, what I want, I want to simply render the avatar URL um, as a circle here on the bottom. So what we have to do is 
when I say for every user in the list, we have to render something. That means that we will have to uh, either use a flat list or map through, the, through an array and return some JSX. In this case, we um, the functionalities are kind of easy and I will not use a flat list. Uh, I will simply go ahead and add the curly brackets. Then I'm gonna use the users array and we're gonna map through this array. Now, inside the map, I will receive every user one after another. And what I want to do is I want to render something on the screen. Let's render an image because that's what we said we want to see. Image that was imported from React Native should be. Where is it imported from? Let's import it. Image imported from React Native, rendered here. And the image needs two properties. One of them is the source, which can be an object with a URI uh, property. In the URI, we're gonna take it from the user.avatar URL because here in the data, we have avatar URLs. And also it needs a style to know how to render it. Without a style, it will not be visible because the width and height is basically zero. So let's do the style um, user avatar, user avatar. Let's go ahead and define the styles because we haven't uh, yet defined them. So user avatar will start, let's start with a width of 50. Uh, you can also provide the height where you can provide aspect ratio. So I'm gonna simply say that I want it to be um, one the aspect ratio and I'm gonna do border, border radius um, 25 to make them circles. Now we see all of them in a vertical list. What we need is a horizontal list. So to do to change them this, the, the, the way we are rendering items in a, um, on the screen, for the parent component, which is this view that contains all of them, let's add a style property here, styles.users. And in our styles, we're gonna define the user styles. And what we are interested in is changing the flex direction because we want to render the children in the same row. And if I do that, and if I open it, each child, uh, why users, uh, I misspelled it, users. All right, now they are displayed in the single uh, row there. Um, okay. The thing is that we are displaying at the moment too many users. So what we will have to do is actually we're gonna have to uh, cut down some users and display only the, the top. So let's go ahead and have a variable here, const uh, displayed users is going to be equal to our array of users, uh, but we're going to Splice it, basically uh, we're gonna take, not splice, uh, slice, right? Zero and then five, for example. And this should take only the first five elements. And now if I'm gonna render, um, loop through the displayed users, now we should see only five of them, the first five. Uh, all right, all right. Let's continue working on uh, some styles for the user avatar. And for example, let's do some margin, not to touch uh, each other. Let's do some uh, border. So the border, the border, we don't need it uh, at this moment because it's not gonna be very visible. Um, but yeah, what I want to do is, <laughs> a very unnecessary feature, like uh, exactly opposite to what I'm always preaching, not to waste time on like small things that will look better. That's what I'm gonna show you in the next step. I want to show you how we can kind of overlap these images, the similar way how you see it in a lot of application when it's displaying this kind of uh, views. What we can do there is we can use the, um, transform property or in the styles 
to move the items to the left. But the thing is that we uh, have to move all of them with different amount of pixels. Because if we move, for example, in the user avatar, if I say transform, transform is an array of different transformations. And if I say translate X minus 100, then all of them will simply move to the left. What we want to do is the first one should remain on the same spot. The next one should move 10 pixels to the left, then 20 pixels to the left and so on. So for that reason, we're not gonna specify it statically here. What we're gonna do is when we are looping through our displayed users in the image, when we are set setting the style, let's go ahead and put this style in an array because by providing an array of an array, we can give multiple styles. One of them is our static style coming from the below. And the second one is going to be a dynamic one. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, and the dynamic one will be transform um, an object, transform an object here, translate X. And instead of minus, yeah, minus 10 will move all of them 10 pixels to the uh, left. If I do minus 20, yes, all of them are moving to the left. What I want to do is I will take from the mapping function, the second parameter is the index of the element. Basically, at, uh, yeah, like the index is the first one, the second one, the third one, or so on. So I'm gonna take the index and I'm gonna multiply by the amount of the overlap. Now we can see that the first item remains on the same position. The next one moves 20 pixels to the left, then 40 pixels to the left and so on. And now all of them are displayed the way we want it. And that leads me to the next thing is uh, we will need to add some borders in order to differentiate them. So the border width can be one. And if we specify border color, white, that will look better. Border width probably two will look better. Yes. And 20 pixels overlapping is too much. Let's try 15. Yes, this is much better. Okay, perfect. And the last thing that actually I want to show you is um, we want to show how many more people are here that we are not displaying because it doesn't mean that we have like five people. It means that these are the first five and we have more. So what I'm going to do is in here in displayed users, after we are looping through all, mm, you know what? Let me show you one problem before we go there. If I refresh, open the model, we see a warning. Each child in a list should have a unique key. That means that in our list where we are mapping, this image, they, when we are mapping, we should always provide a key to our components in order for React to properly uh, cache these items. So the key can be our user.id. And if we do that, we get rid of them, uh, that problem. And now coming back to what I was saying, uh, we want to display one more a circle here with the number of users that are, are, are also there. Um, so how did I do it? I took, yeah, this is actually not that important, you know? Mm. Yeah, so I simply uh, used the view with the same styles user avatar, style, styles.avatar, in order to get like the same sizing, the same border width and so on. And inside this, I put a text with plus and then a number, for example, plus 10. I see plus 10 there, but the value of 10 actually should be uh, calculated and should be calculated based on how many users we have, users length minus uh, displayed users dot length. So we see that we display five and there are six more in, um, <clears throat> yeah, in there. Now let's go back here in the user avatar, provide a couple of more options to make sure that this digit is displayed correctly, such as uh, a background color, background color, Gainsborough, Gainsborough, uh, that will display it with a background color. Let's 
justify content in the center to display the text there and align items as well, center. Oh, uh, perfect, perfect, like this. Um, and the only thing is left here is to translate it a bit the same way as we are doing here with every single image. So we can provide the translation to our view here by providing the styles in an array. And here, transform, multiply not by index, by by the display users dot length because this is going to be displayed after the last one. And just like that, we have plus six at the end there. And I think with that being said, like this page, I showed like step-by-step -step everything, how you should uh, implement it. Uh, let me just double check if we have anything else, but I don't think so. We have a user's mapping and so on. Yeah, it looks perfect. Um, Actually, it's not done yet because we are displaying it still when we press on this icon. So what we should do is uh, we should display this model whenever we press on one of these events. To do that, let's go ahead in our tab one screen. And in the function render item, we have a on press event that simply alerts. What we want to do is we will use navigation to navigate to our model. And now if I'm gonna press, it's gonna open the model. But there is one more thing. We need to, to, to send some data to our model because later on it will need to query information about this specific event that we are clicking on. I don't know, QA session is still there. <laughs> So for that reason, um, we can send the data about the event. And the most important data about the event is the ID. So let's go ahead and say uh, on press is equal reservation.id. Uh, it will show us some errors just because the typings are not correct. If you're interested, you can go to the types and find here the model and provide the value an object with ID string. This is what parameters do we expect on this screen. Now having that, we can go back in the model screen. At the moment, we're not gonna dynamically display a different event. We're still gonna take it from uh, the dummy data, but let's go ahead and uh, destructure the route from here. Uh, model screen route route and let's go ahead and console log basically let's take first the, the id from the route params route dot params dot id and let's render it here id we can also safely access it this way So now we are console logging by ID where I will actually do, uh, I will add some text here just to see what is the ID of the event that we're trying to render in the model. And if I go back to our um, expo terminal, now if I'm gonna press on this event, I'm gonna see a rendering event one. If I'm gonna press on the second one, rendering event two, and the same way for every single event, rendering event one. That means that now on the model screen, we know the ID of a, uh, of a event. And tomorrow when we will implement the backend, we will be able to query that event from, uh, from the backend. And I think with that being said, I think we are done with this model with detail, event detailed page. Let me double check. Yes, most probably yes. And we are not very far from the end. So we will probably need more, like 30 more minutes to, to finish for today. And let me go ahead and do git add commit uh, event details model. And yes, with that being said, we are done here. All right, so it's quite intense. It's quite intense. Let's uh, take a small break. Let's breathe in. 
uh, drink some water uh, because we are uh, going quite fast. I have some coffee here. Um, how, how, how is it going for you guys? Uh, let me please zoom in in your VS code. Yes, I think I zoomed in the maximum I could just to see things on the screen. Mm, what else? Yeah, the recording is going to be available on YouTube shortly after it ends. Yes, exactly. Q&A, let's check the Q&A. Uh, how do we follow what's going on if we just joined? Uh, if you just joined, then uh, I would recommend following it on YouTube because it's going to be available uh, there. And Miguel, we have a new uh, supporter, a new member of Not Just Development Community on YouTube. Thank you very much, Miguel, and welcome to, um, to the family. Um, Can you, I should increase a bit the simulator size. Let's try it. We'll see if this will work. Yeah. Mm. Will there be push notification in the application? In this application, I'm not planning to integrate push notifications. Um, that's outside the scope of, of, of now. It's a bit too complicated to, to implement it during a hackathon. So yeah. However, in the premium course, uh, in the full stack mobile development course, um, the next module that is uh, coming up uh, is the notifications. And I almost finished preparing it. And um, by the time you, you enroll and you get to that module, it's gonna be available. And you will also have access to all the new modules from the course. And yeah, there we teach how to implement push notifications with a proper system to, to send the, these push notifications, both to Apple users and to Android users. And by the way, if you're interested in uh, upgrading your skills as a full stack mobile developer, if you want to get to the next level and actually be able to, to put everything that you have learned so far together uh, in order to be able to build mobile applications from end to end yourself, because I know that this is a problem for a lot of people. You kind of know a bit of everything, uh, but whenever you try to, to, to apply your skills to actually start a project, then you feel a bit uh, lost. You don't know where to start, where to go, what to plan everything um, step by step. So if you, if you are in that situation, uh, the course will help you tremendously because it will teach you how to, uh, how to approach uh, a React Native project like a full stack project, how to start designing it, how to implement the user interface, how to work on more advanced features, how to implement the backend side. The backend side is very complicated and I know that. And I put a lot of um, emphasis on the backend in our course. So basically half of a course is dedicated to the backend and different um, systems for your application, such as a newsfeed system, which uh, has its own module there. And you can implement um, a newsfeed system similar to a Facebook or Instagram, uh, where you only see posts from your feed. These feeds are automatically ranked and are automatically generated behind the scenes automatically. And um, yeah, we, we go into a lot of details there. And if you're interested in that, good news, because we have uh, the, Black si the Black Friday and the Cyber Monday sale currently going on. And all our packages are sold at 25% discount. So this is the biggest discount that we're gonna ever make, make for, for this course because it's a premium course, guys. I put uh, more than one and a half years into building it. I still continue to put a lot of effort to keep it updated. Uh, we have a big community there and um, yeah, it's something that, um, that, that I put my, my, my soul and uh, my sweat in it uh, for, for the last year. So if you're interested, make sure uh, to, to take the, to benefit 
from a 25% discount and join today. And uh, from next week, if you're joining today, from next week, we get started with our group coaching sessions where you'll be able to work together with me. Um, and I'm going to help you move through the course. I'm going to help you answer all your questions. And yeah, we're going to have like this more uh, personal connection, uh, helping you achieve your goals. All right. With that being said, uh, let's let's look for some of my other comments here. Rogelio, greatly appreciate all your efforts, Vadim. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, support. Yeah, and Alexandra is sharing with us the link where you can join and uh, the course, the premium course. Let's put it here as well on YouTube. Is there a certificate after completing the, uh, the project? Um, yes, after completing the course, there, there is a certificate. So you're going to receive a certificate of completion if you followed uh, most of, um, of the content there. If you um, follow the assignments, we have assignments to, to, to make sure that, yeah, there is. Okay. Uh, any other important questions to, to discuss now or we are moving to the next step? Let's let's move to the next step as I really plan to um, uh, to finish in two hours. Alexandra, is it going to be possible? Yes, Alexandra said yes from the other room. Uh, so we are finished with a event detailed page. Uh, you have the result here, but we also build it like step by step. Everything where I showed, like explain the code and what we did there. Um, now the next step is to render users. This is important because um, we would like to see a list of users that are attending a, uh, an event or in general, like all users that are attending, uh, are registered in the application so that we can start uh, a chat with them. <laughs> Alex is smiling. Um, so for that, uh, we will need a separate page with a list of users. Uh, for that, let's go ahead and start by creating a component called user list item. And for this component, I'm going to be uh, uh, lazy and I'm not going to build it uh, at now. I'm just going to copy the code. But as you can see here, it's a very simple component. It renders a container. Inside that container, it renders the user avatar and then his name. And then we have some styles to make it pretty. So I think it's a pretty simple component that we can safely take from here. And let's go in our application and inside the components, let's go and create the user list item.tsx. And here let's paste our component. Now that we have user list items, we need a screen where to render these users. Uh, where, okay guys, I was not sharing the screen. So don't worry, I'm gonna move back. I'm gonna delete what I just did. Why nobody told me? Let me share a screen now. So guys, as I was saying, I was checking our technical guide from the website and in the render users, what we have to do is create a file in the components called user list item. And we're gonna render there a simple view, uh, a container with an image for the user avatar and the text for the user name. So that we have some styles to make it pretty. And let's go ahead and copy this from here. Let's go in our uh, components folder and in the components, create a new file called user. Come on, new file. User list item.tsx. Okay, let's paste our code here. 
And, and now, uh, as I said, we need a screen that will render the users. Uh, look what we're gonna do. Uh, we used the model for uh, the model screen for this um, for displaying the details about the event. And now let's go ahead and use this icon that will open another model with uh, users. So uh, what we will need, uh, first of all, we will need a screen. So let's go ahead in the screens and add a new file here called uh, users screen, users, users screen dot tsx. Here I'm gonna generate an empty function, an empty component that simply renders a text user screen. Now let's go ahead in our uh, navigation in the uh, index and think about where we will put this screen. Let's search the model, for example, model here, and you're gonna be able to get to this root navigator. This root navigator contains our first model that now displays information about the event. Let's go ahead and duplicate this row and add one more stack screen here for our users. And the component that is gonna display is our users screen. This user screen for me was automatically imported from the screens. Make sure it is imported for you as well. And now let's change the behavior of this icon here. This icon uh, is rendered inside the bottom tab navigator. If we look at the tab one, here you will see a header right. The header right is this font awesome, the info circle that is rendering to the model. What I want to uh, redirect, that is redirecting to the model. I want to change this behavior to redirect to our users uh, and save like that. And now if I'm gonna press on the, this one, I see users screen. Uh, that's good. Uh, I can also change the um, icon here. I think I was working with a different one. I don't know if, let me just try users here. Yes, users were also works. And for the color, we can do a gray dim gray, yeah, something like that. So now we have this users model ready for, for being uh, implemented, right? Uh, right. If you want to get rid of that TypeScript issues, we also need to specify in the types.tsx under the root stack param list, the same way we have the model, the same way we should have users, that doesn't need any parameters, so we can simply say undefined here. Okay, now it's we don't have that error anymore. Back on the user screen, let's go ahead and actually render our users. For that, you remember we had the users in our data. So let's go ahead and do assets data users. And we're gonna use a flat list from React Native, flat list from React Native. And let's go ahead and render this flat list here. Uh, we don't even need a view. We right away will render the flat list. So the flat list needs data, which is our users. And a flat list needs a render item, which is a function that will specify how every single item should be rendered. Every single item will be a user list item that we uh, created um, previously. And this one needs some properties such as a user. We're gonna take the item, send it to our user. I'm moving a bit fast here for the flat list and so on. But if uh, these things are confusing for you, then check out some of the other tutorials that we have on YouTube 
that explains like very in depth and step by step how everything works. Now I don't stop like at every single parameter to to explain how it works, but in most of our tutorials, like we take it an approach that we go in in the details for every single thing that we're doing. So if I save now and check the model, I right away see a list of users there. Perfect. Um, and I think that's uh, that's it with our users. I'm gonna go ahead and do git add git commit minus m users. <clears throat> um, the next step in our plan is my account. Uh, most of the application needs some kind of a my account page, at least to display the logout button that we will need or the, the, the username or something like at least something. So let's go ahead and create in the tab two screen, let's display some minimal information um, about the user. And also let's display a sign out button that we will need uh, tomorrow. For the code, again, uh, I'm not gonna write it. Let's copy this, um, this component from here, from the guide. Let's go ahead in Visual Studio Code. And in our tab two screen, I'm gonna replace everything with the code from uh, the guide. And I'm gonna explain it uh, shortly what it does. If I go to tab two screen, here I see starting from the top an image, which is this one here displaying the URI from the user image. The data is coming from our uh, dummy data. Tomorrow we're gonna implement uh, like proper data fetching for this information. Uh, then we have a name, which is this text for the display name. And lastly, we have the footer with the sign out button, which is a custom button uh, of type tertiary. That's why it's displayed like this. And foreground color as well it has. Perfect, so this is our uh, My Profile screen. Commit. Again, uh, it's very simple, but you don't need anything more at this moment. And you will add as, as you go, you will be able to add features and information here. My Profile. My Profile, perfect. Um, and our last step, if I'm not mistaken, are our authentication screens. Let's stop for a bit before we implement that. Um, or shall we, because this is our last step. Yeah, let, let's actually implement the authentication screens because um, they are pretty easy. As I am providing these authentication screens to you, um, we have built the authentication screens if you follow this playlist, if you are interested in actually building it yourself and learning how to build them, check out this playlist. And there we implemented the authentication um, um, part one, part two. We also implemented the hook form and also we implemented them with a backend. But you might not need the backend. Uh, however, the first three videos might be interesting to you. And I took the, the authentication screens that we built in this tutorial on YouTube, available to everyone. I took them and I provided you uh, in the asset bundle. At the beginning, we imported under the screens, these auth screens. And here we have a sign in screen and the sign up screen. Now, the only thing that we need to do, if you haven't done that, by the way, if in the screens you don't have a auth screens uh, at this moment, make sure that you download the asset bundle and you drag and drop the auth screens from here in your screens. What I'm doing. Yeah, like this. Um, by the way, you can also use these authentication screens for your project as well, in order to save a bit of time and not to waste time on designing and implementing authentication screens feel free to use uh, this folder in your project as well. Uh, now, the only thing that is left to do for us is to add the screens inside our navigation. 
So let's go ahead in our navigation, index.tsx. And here, let's uh, find what? The, at the top, root stack navigator, right? Yes, root stack navigator. So in the root stack navigator, at the moment, we do not, uh, we do not have it, but tomorrow we're gonna have a variable is authenticated. Let's say is auto authenticated is true. And if the user is authenticated, yes, like display the all the application that we have, like the, the tab navigator, display the model, user, anything that the user has access to. However, if a user is not authenticated, let's do it like this. If a user is not authenticated, then we want to return the stack navigator, but only with authentication screens. And this way we want to limit on what uh, screens the user has access, depending on, um, on the state, if he's authenticated or not. This is basically creating like protected routes. Now, uh, what we want to do is we want to use a stack screen here for our, uh, with a name, uh, first of all, sign in. Uh, the component that we want to render is going to be our sign in screen that we import. Where is it sign in screen? Here that we import from the screens that we created. And uh, for the options, options, we can provide a title, sign in. No, actually for the sign in, I think we, what we want is to hide the header. So if I provide header shown here, header shown false, then uh, it's not going to be visible. And now the same way I want to render the sign out screen, not sign out, sign up screen. Sign up screen. And if I save, and now if I change this is authenticated to false, then I will simulate a user that is not authenticated. Let me actually refresh this, reload. Um, what's happening? Let's uh, add the sign in and sign up names not to have this TypeScript uh, issue. And that is gonna be in our root stack param list, sign in and define and sign up as well undefined back here, um, let's see what's happening with our, our application. Let's run it again. Unable to handle requirement unknown, unknown module. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because we ignore one step from our um, guide. Uh, the authentication screens depend on the React hook form. So in the guide I have here, like, first of all, install React hook form. So let's grab this command uh, and let's um, execute it into a new terminal, npx expo install React hook form, this one. Uh, which backend will we use tomorrow? Tomorrow we're gonna use nhost. It's gonna be very easy for us to um, uh, set up authentication, a database, a GraphQL API. But now let's double check if our application will work. Again, we need to restart it probably. We'll just run it once again. I. Let me try to stop the server and start it again with dash dash clear here.
Now I'm going to close it here and open it again on iOS. Building, 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 building. So right away here, we can see the authentication screen and we're greeting with a um, sign-in screen. It has like a top like header where you can customize the image. It has two properties for the email and password and a button sign in. Then we have like social buttons. If you are interested in implementing them at the moment, they're simply uh, dummy buttons that are not doing anything. Uh, and also it has a don't have an account, create one label here that we can press and it will open the create an account. I see that in the create an account, I actually do want to see the header. So for the sign up screen, instead of specifying header shown false, I will say that the title that I want to display should be create and or sign up, let's do sign up. And now it's gonna have a sign up and a back button that we can return back to the sign in or we can press on the sign in and go back this way. All right, so uh, after the user will sign in, then this variable tomorrow is going to be changed to true. And from here, the user will be redirected to the home screen because if it is authenticated, we are moving to uh, returning this part of the code with all the screens that the user should have access to. And with that being said, we are done for, uh, for today, building the today's application. Git commit minus M authentication. And yes, now we are actually ready for uh, for tomorrow's live stream, for tomorrow's application. Uh, not for tomorrow's application, because we're gonna continue tomorrow the same application. What I wanted to say is that we are ready to implement the backend side of the features that we already have. And as you can saw, yes, we had a lot of uh, components prepared from the, from the beginning, but if you um, focus on the most important stuff in, in this application, as you saw, the most important stuff is actually this screen. If I only focused on this screen and implemented this screen, you can consider this as a, a good enough application for, for a hackathon. But this, um, this should be like working, connected with the backend and so on. Um, yeah, we added like extra stuff like uh, displaying users, displaying information about the event, uh, profile screen here. And yeah, what do you think about this build? Uh, I'm really curious to know your opinion and please let me know in the comments down below. Um, how do you? Uh, how was this uh, project when it comes to uh, educational content? Uh, and also share your experience as well, because it's gonna help me understand like uh, how to better explain things. This time I took a different approach. I moved way faster. Uh, we didn't like write every single line of code that we we did, but this was with a purpose in order to. Um, to, to uh, uh, give you the time that you need to work on your application. We are doing this during a, uh, a hackathon. So uh, in this context, I think this is exactly what you need at this moment. Just some ideas on how to get started, how to put everything together and how to move uh, and implement this, this kind of applications. Um, but if this, is, if this approach that is much faster, is interesting to you and you still can follow along and you can still get value, let me know. I'm interested in that. Now uh, that we are approaching the end, let me know if we have any questions. This is the time for questions. Um, and now I'm gonna cover some questions related to this application that we have built today. And in one hour, in actually less than one hour, we have a group coaching session on Zoom uh, where you can join. And uh, if you're gonna have any questions, I will help you there as well. You know what? Uh, one little, 
idea that I have. Uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will come with more information about that. Uh, yeah, a bit confused, I am. But yeah, let, let me know questions. Will you connect a database through the backend where we can upload photos to S3, for example, a profile photo, or will it not be much? Uh, we're gonna connect the, a database tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna have access to the user profile picture. Yes, we're gonna do that tomorrow. So um, yeah, don't forget that tomorrow, Saturday, uh, we are continuing this build and I wait you at the same time at 3 p.m. GMT, um, both on Zoom or on YouTube, um, you can join. And we will continue this application with implementing the backend side with Nhost. Uh, we're going to do the authentication, the database, um, and we're going to implement GraphQL API with Apollo client. So it's going to be a, a lot of educational material tomorrow. Uh, we're going to take it step by step and I'm going to show you how to implement easily a backend for your application. Um, yeah, it's going to be very valuable for you um, for specifically for this hackathon. <clears throat> and yeah, before we go, uh, I want to remind you again about our Black Friday sale that we are having right now with them. Um, our premium courses at academy.notjust.dev. Uh, this weekend only, we have 25% off uh, for all the packages, even for our uh, ultimate package, which has only 50 spots available. And in that ultimate package, you will have uh, access to group coaching sessions every week where we work together with you. Uh, I mean, you work together with me to help uh, achieve your goals and to, to help you on your journey with a course and also building your application. And yes. Uh, from the team, do we have any uh, questions there? Uh, one challenge with you going faster is the critical updates in the navigation. We are really fast between watching and coding and we don't have a reference in the blog. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, we didn't touch that much on the navigation side. We basically reused most of the things that uh, was initialized with them, um, with, that, with that template. So yeah, uh, we have much better tutorials on the channel when it comes to navigation. Uh, I see that a lot. some people are saying that for today, the pace for me was perfect, but uh, people have some experience with parse server. For tomorrow, it... Yeah, uh, I'm going to repeat. Tomorrow, we're going to use nhost uh, to build the backend. And nhost is a GraphQL alternative for Firebase. It's basically a super simple way to build scalable backends uh, for your mobile and also for your web applications. Uh, it's targeted at uh, front-end developers and it's trying to simplify um, building backends for, for, for um, the same way as Versal simplified building front-ends and deploying backends. You're going to see tomorrow how, uh, how easy it is to use it. <clears throat> okay, guys, so um, I'm going to wait you in uh, 45 minutes at the group coaching session. Thank you very much for being here with me till the end. And if you are learning something new from this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel, turn on the notification bell, not to miss any videos that we are uh, doing, any live streams. And also um, share some of our tutorials with your network. If you have developer friends, send them and uh, hopefully we will be able to help even more developers out there. 
good luck with your application during the hackathon. Uh, take care, and I will see you very soon if you're interested to join the, uh, the group coaching sessions. And that was it for today. Bye. I'm going to see you tomorrow at the same time.